Exercise 4. In this exercise, we take a look at the functionality in Creo 2.0 and how it works with Revolve features, as well as we're going to go ahead and learn how to set up more additional constraints for a sweep. And we're going to make a spoke on here, as you can see. We're going to learn how to pattern it, a circular pattern, and then finish it off with Revolve and some fillets. So that's our goal. So let's begin at the top here on page 42. And your book might be a little different. Okay, now um, we'll go ahead and select the, we'll go to new part and save it as E4 and select the front plane and start a sketch on it. Take your rectangle tool and at the center, click and drag out a rectangle. Make sure there's no uh, relationships of equal between the vertical and horizontal lengths. And then I'll click. We're going to go ahead and set the sizes up here to be 1 by 3. And now take the circle tool. And right around here, on, near the middle, on the left, but not on the edge, click and drag out a small circle, the middle click. Go to the Trim tool, which is Delete Segment, delete out the geometry in the center, around there. And now we're going to go ahead and add some additional dimensions here. So go to the Normal tool, click on this line here, and then move over to the right, middle click and make sure it's 3. Click on the arc, middle click, and make sure it's 0.5. Click on the center point of the arc and the bottom edge and middle click and make sure it's 1.68. Okay, uh, it says most of the things are defined here, but there's a dimension we don't want, which uh, this one might appear. So what we're going to do is we're going to dimension from this line here to the center point of that arc. And then right above it, right here, middle click to drop that dimension. And it's going to tell us resolve sketch. And what we want to get rid of is this one right here. So we could find that from the list. And, and here, mine it turns out to be dimension 4, 1.27. Yours might be a little bit different. might be like 1.3 or 1.4 or less. But it's that one that we want to highlight and hit delete. This one will override that. And so this is going to be 0.25. Then you can middle click a couple times to clear that out. Also, I had turned off my CSYs and as well as my plane display here, so it would be easier for you to see. But if you want them on, you can leave them on. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and revolve this. Or actually, we could put in the uh, Sketch Chamfer tool. For chamfer and chamfer trim, we want to go ahead and trim it. So click on that. And then click on this line right here, a little bit above the V. And then click on this horizontal line to the left of the L. Okay, it's going to put in some dimensions there that we really don't want. Uh, we want to add our own. So if you go to the normal tool, click on this line here. Click on this point, And right in the middle, up above it, middle click. That should be 0.25. And then click on this angled line and this top horizontal line. And right between the two, if they were to extend out to the left, right where my pointer is here, middle click. And that's going to be 45 degrees. And middle click a couple times to get out of the dimension tool. Okay, at this point, we should be ready to go ahead and revolve this. So let's go to, uh, I'm sorry, go, uh, make sure you're in sketch and hit the green check mark, and then go to model and find revolve. You're going to select this right edge to revolve 360 degrees around, and just hit the green check mark. And there's our model. Okay, the next thing we're going to add here is we're going to go ahead and select the 
uh, we're going to move on and we're, we want to generate the next part, which is this curve, which is just a horizontal line, an arc that's tangent. See the T and has an R1, and then there's a second arc with an R1 and T. All the T's are for tangent. All those corners have to be tangent. Both those arcs should be equal. And the H, there's a small little line here to the left for a horizontal line. So it's just two straight lines that are horizontal and then two arcs. So let's go ahead and do that now. Select the front plane and start your sketch. And click on the AB button and go to front. Take your line tool, slide up to the middle here and snap to that line in the center somewhere. But it doesn't have to be dead center. You're not going to find the dead center of the dome, just of the vertical center line that you see there. Click, drag out a horizontal line, click, and the middle click a couple times. Double click on that and type in 2. And then this dimension should appear. Double click on that and type in 1.67. Now we could continue on. Let's go and find our arc. Find the three point tangent ends arc. Glide up to that vertex on the far left. Click and drag it straight to the left and then up. And you'll see a little T appears for tangent. You don't want to make this a straight 90, just make it a little bit less. See where it's snapping to the center point? So just a little bit less than that. You don't want to snap it to the center point. Click, and I'll click on that vertex of that arc you just drew. Click and drag it straight up and to the left. And this one you do kind of want it as close as you could get to where it looks like it's directly above the center point. But we'll have to fix it, so not a big deal. We're not going to, not going to snap to it automatically. And then middle click a couple times. All right, first of all, you can change this dimension to 1. And I was actually lucky enough to get the R1 and R1. I didn't tell you that on the video, but if they're not if you're not getting the R1 and R1, which means that they're equal, go over here up here to the equal button, click on it, and then select both arcs. And then you should get R1 and R1. Okay, this dimension here needs to be changed to 0.7. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the line tool and off the top here click that vertex and drag a short little horizontal line. Then middle click again. And we're going to force a tangent relationship between these, this arc and that line. So we could go up to the constraint tool and find tangent. Click on tangent. Select the line and the arc. And then middle click a couple times. Now you can pull this dimension up if it appears. If you don't have this dimension, uh, you might have stumbled upon the way somewhere, but uh, you could go into the normal tool and select both ends. And go ahead and type in 4. And then drag these dimensions out so you can see them better. Make sure that it's fully defined. You should have an H, a T, R1, T, R1, T, H. So T is for tangent. Okay, at this point we could go ahead and hit OK. Now we need to go to some of the tools here. Okay, so just make sure once you have that sketch done, go ahead and hit OK. Now we go to Sweep and go ahead and select the curve near the end point, left. Now find this tool up here, which is Create or Edit Sweep Section. Go ahead and click on that. It automatically starts a sketch at that end, and now we could go over here to the arc tools and find center and ends. With center and ends, we locate the center point first, click and drag it straight to the left on that edge. Click again, drag it up, and drag it clockwise till you connect to the 3 o'clock area here on this edge again. Click, and I'll select the line tool. And off of the vertex of one of those, drag a horizontal line straight down. You should get the little H. Drag it to the right, and when you get the little equal or little lines that show that it's aligning, click and connect it. Middle click a couple times. Let's change this to 0.5 and 0.25. 
and now we're ready to go ahead and hit OK. You'll see a preview of it sweeping along the guide curve. Hit the green check mark to apply. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put some fillets in. So let's go to the uh, fillet tool, or for I should say round tool, and set the rounds to uh, set this to point one two five. Select the bottom edge here, and then this edge here. So those two edges should be selected, and hit apply. Go to the rounds tool again, and set to point two five and select this edge here, the top, and apply. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a circular pattern. Let's go ahead and turn on our axis display so we have an axis to make the pattern around. Okay, once you have your axis in the center, we're in good shape. What you want to do Let's hit escape a couple times or even middle click a couple times. Make sure you don't have anything selected. Now we're going to hold control and select the sweep from the tree, the round one and the round two. Release control and then right click on any of those and find group. The group will enable us to pattern uh, everything together. So now you could go ahead and click on the group local here in the feature tree. Find the pattern tool and click on it. Now click on the little arrow to the right of dimension, and we're going to go with axis. Now here it's looking for an item to select. In this case, it's looking for the axis. So go ahead and click on the axis here. And here we get to type in how, how many we want. In this case, we want three. And we want them patterned around 360 degrees. So 360 divided by three, hit enter, and it converts it to 120 and hit the green check mark. Okay, let's go ahead and select the front plane again and start a sketch. And go to your AB button and front. We're going to go ahead and draw a circle at the end here, but before we do that, um, actually, let, oh, let's go ahead and um, Let's go ahead and we're going to add some reference geometry to this edge. Because if we were to try and draw a circle to find the center between this edge, it would be very difficult. So let's go over here to the upper left and click on reference. The references appear here. You could go ahead and select this edge and hit close. And now we have an edge to reference when we put our circle in. So click on circle and you'll see it will snap to that edge. So go ahead and click on that. And drag out your circle in the middle click a couple times. It's going to be one inch in diameter and it's going to be dimensioned 2.5 from the base. Okay, we're going to go ahead and revolve, hit the OK button, and go to revolve, and you can select that axis in the center to revolve around as well. And hit the green check mark to apply. Let's go to the rounds tool, keep it at 0.25, and select these edges to add fillets to them. Hit apply again. Okay, now that you have that, let's go ahead and rotate this around and look at the underside. And from here we're going to go ahead and add a hole. And we're going to use the hole tool, click on that. And then you have options for like create simple hole or create standard hole. Let's click on create standard hole. And notice there's the different uh, ISO or UNC. We're going to go with UNC. And over here we have the different types of threads and such. Uh, first of all, let's go to placement so we can see the preview. Click in this placement box and go ahead and click on that, uh, or that center line that you have there. And it will position it there. If you didn't click on the center line, if you click somewhere out in the area here, you could go ahead and position X and Y lines. Um, in this case, though, we had a nice center we want to drop it in on. And over here, you'll see there's different sizes for the thread. So let's say we went with a, 
5 eighths, 11. Okay. And then you could adjust the depth. You could adjust it here or up there. Let's say we want one and a half deep. Okay, you could uh, also, there's other options as far as countersink or adding the counter bore. And uh, so at this point, okay, at this point, you want to go to and turn on your CSY or your plane display here. Make sure access display is turned on as well. And you'll see in pink, it actually lets you know what you have left or remaining to add to it. In this case, once you have all this selected up here, just make sure you go to placement. And select diameter. On the linear part, like a rectangle or square, you could go with linear. There's also radial. But we'll go with uh, diameter. You click on diameter. It's looking for two offset references. So you could actually select the plane. And then click in here and select the axis in the center. And it will locate. Now these, if we want a dead center, we could type in zero. And and zero here as well and it will center it for us. Go ahead and hit the green check mark and apply. And there is our holes. Our hole. And that completes exercise four.